The 2022 NFL Draft was extremely weird when it came to quarterbacks. There wasn't a top-notched, franchise-changing prospect, but there were some players with a very high ceiling. At one point, the subject of today's video was praised for having the top arm in the entire draft class, and many thought he could be a franchise piece and the most underrated quarterback in this year's class. Some did think he was overrated, but no one expected him to go from a first-round pick and a potential number one overall prospect to completely undrafted. In today's video, we're going to talk about this player, go through his collegiate career, and what ended up going wrong for him, and why his stock died. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. So you're probably wondering who the subject of today's video is, and it is none other than former Nevada and current Eagles quarterback Carson Strong. He probably had the biggest stock tank of any prospect in the 2022 NFL Draft, but in order to understand what went wrong, we first need to go back in time. Athletics ran in the Strong family, as his dad played basketball for UC Davis, and that is why the family eventually settled down in California, in a town known as Vacaville, which is in the middle of San Francisco and Sacramento. Carson always loved sports, as he played both football and basketball as a kid, and he was seen as a ferocious competitor and a leader. His high school coach said, quote, I've known Carson since he was a young kid. He's been around athletics and school his whole life, and ever since he was a little guy, he was always working to be better. By the time he eventually got to high school, he had taken a liking to the quarterback position, and by his junior year, he was starting to become a big-time prospect. As a junior at Willwood High School, he threw for 3,000 yards and 27 touchdowns in only 10 games. Not only was he good at football, but he was also a star basketball player, as he averaged nearly 20 points per game and 13 rebounds a game, but then problems started to emerge as he had serious pain in his knee. He would elect to have knee surgery going into his senior year of high school, and this chased a lot of teams away, and he also had to give up basketball. Thankfully, there was one school, though, that offered him a scholarship. Strong was always a good player, but he never got any respect. He said, quote, In high school, I had schools come look at me, and I thought I threw well in front of them, but for whatever reason, they never pulled the trigger. I remember UC Davis came to see me throw three times, and my dad played basketball there, and they were 20 minutes away from my hometown, but on the third time they did come to see me throw, they told me to come to their camp. And I took that as the ultimate disrespect. I was like, you know what? You've come to see me throw three times. What am I going to do at camp that you haven't already seen? So yeah, Strong was going completely under the radar, but there were schools that were interested in him, such as Cal, Oregon State, and San Diego State. But unfortunately, none of those schools ever offered him. Nevada, though, was different. They actually did offer him, and they wanted him to be their quarterback. Combining that with the fact that they were his only FBS offer, it was a no-brainer for him to go there. The funny thing is, though, is that Nevada didn't offer Strong because of game film or the good word, but instead, it was because of a cell phone video of him throwing passes to his dad in a neighborhood park. Besides the obvious reasons of why he went to Nevada, he had this to say about the school. Quote, I really wanted to go to a place that needed me. Nevada was the first and only school to offer me, so I knew that the coaching staff believed in me. It was a good distance from home. It was pretty close, but not too close. They had the air raid offense, so I knew I'd have a good time there, and the coaches believed in me, and that was really the main thing. Strong had committed to Nevada prior to the knee surgery, and they would honor his scholarship after the surgery, and they lucked out according to his high school coach. His coach said, quote, if he didn't miss his senior year and wasn't hurt, every Pac-12 school would have wanted him. Sitting out was definitely hard on Carson. He did the right thing by getting surgery, as he had a future in football. To his credit, Carson was always around the program like another coach. He attended practice and games every day, and was always helping out and coaching. He was like that coming into high school, and he wanted to be a coach, a student of the game, and was always eager to learn. So yeah, Strong was definitely underrated, but he was still seen as an impact player. According to 24-7 Sports, he was rated as a three-star recruit, the number 76 pro-style quarterback, and the 2,171st best player in the class of 2018. He was a hidden gem, but would he be able to stay healthy at Nevada? Well, let's take a look. When he arrived at Nevada, there really wasn't a ton of hype for him, but eventually going into 2019, he would battle it out with Malik Henry for the starting job. To a lot of people's shock, he was named the Week 1 starter. He'd make his first career start in Week 1 against the Purdue Boilermakers, and this game was insane. He led them on a comeback, and after throwing for 295 yards and 3 touchdowns, the Pack kicked a game-winning field goal to upset the Boilermakers at home. Unfortunately, though, Strong would be humbled in Week 2, as they would travel on the road to play against Oregon, and they lost 77-6. From there, he was kind of up and down. He had games where he was terrible, like the Hawaii and San Diego State game, and then he had games where he showed a lot of flash. Against New Mexico, he threw for over 300 yards and two touchdowns, and then against Weber State, he threw for 299 yards. And then against Fresno State, he threw for three touchdowns. He was definitely up and down his freshman year, but that was to be expected, as he wasn't very experienced. He ended up getting the pack to a bowl game, where he threw for a career-high 400 yards and a touchdown, 
in a loss to Ohio. As a freshman, he threw for 2,300 yards, 11 touchdowns, and 7 picks, but many expected him to make a major jump in 2020. That is exactly what would happen, and in week one, he showed the kind of promise he had. Against Wyoming, he threw for over 400 yards and 4 touchdowns without a pick, as they upset the Cowboys in overtime, and then the following week, he threw another nearly perfect game in a win over UNLV. Against Utah State, he went for over 400 yards and three touchdowns, and that started a streak where he threw for three touchdowns, then three more, then two more, then two more, before a record-setting game against Fresno State. In a win over the Bulldogs, he threw for a total of 354 yards and five touchdowns. Keep in mind, he was also very efficient during this time period, as he only had four interceptions on the entire season. This also helped Nevada win a lot of games, as they ended up going 6-2 and two in the regular season, and they even won their bowl game against Tulane. This is where the hype became pretty much unreal, as against the Green Wave, he went 22 of 28 for 271 yards and five touchdowns without an interception. His sophomore year was his breakout year, as he threw for nearly 3,000 yards with 27 touchdowns and only four picks. His draft stock was starting to rise, and in the spring of 2021, many were saying he was the best kept secret of all college football quarterbacks and could have a Zach Wilson or Josh Allen-like rise. The hype was pretty much unreal for him, but how would he end up doing in 2021? Well, he was pretty good, but to some, he didn't really pass the eye test. He did throw for four touchdowns against Idaho State and had six against New Mexico State, but many were very concerned about his mobility. In his last three games of his collegiate career, he threw for a combined 11 touchdowns and helped Nevada have a sneaky good season. They ended up going 8-4 and four in the regular season before he would end up opting out of the bowl game to prepare for the NFL. How did he do? He finished with a career-high 4,186 yards with 36 touchdowns and 8 picks. On paper, those numbers sound great, but scouts were a little bit concerned about him and his mobility from his knee was a major, major problem. Combining 2020 and 2021, he led the entire FBS in touchdown passes and was the Mountain West Player of the Year both times. Everything looked pretty good, but when you go back to February of 2021, this was the moment that sort of changed his career. He decided he would have surgery on his knee at that time, and there was an expected recovery time of 9 to 12 months. Against the wishes of his father, he decided to return to the field after 6 months instead of the 9-12 to because he wanted to play. While he did put up big numbers and started every game, his lack of mobility was extremely evident and scouts were very worried. He declared for the 2022 NFL Draft and became a very intriguing prospect. Some thought he could be a first round talent, while others thought he'd be a day 2 or day 3 selection who would spend his entire career as a backup. One scout said, quote, Strong has a lightning bolt for a right arm, but he also runs as fast as a secretariat statue. And yes, he had doctor's hands and tools inside his right knee. According to many reports from medical people, Strong had a bone and cartilage condition that could only be managed and not eliminated. No number of surgeries, knee braces, or painkillers could make that issue go away. This is something he's going to have to adapt to, and it's not just going to disappear. This injury would haunt him tremendously. The family ended up renting out a nice place to watch the draft, but to their horror, their son would not even be selected. Every pick flew by, and many wondered if his name would even come across the screen. Eventually, two of his teammates would end up getting drafted, but he did not. He started to get calls later on in the draft, as teams wanted to sign him as an undrafted free agent. This basically meant that he was probably not going to get drafted, and he was basically entering the undrafted free agent sweepstakes. His dream was crushed as he ended up not getting drafted because of this, and he'd have to choose between the Eagles and the Vikings. Apparently in the moment, Strong was very nervous, and he decided to weigh all the pros and cons of each organization. He ended up calling up his head coach, Jane Orville, and after speaking with him, he walked back to the room and said he was an Eagle. While he's not going to have an opportunity to start, he could earn his way onto the roster, and Strong said he's not too worried about not being drafted, as he had this to say. Quote, my story wouldn't be the same if I had it the easy way. I've never had anything given to me. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. So why did he ultimately go undrafted? Well, there were concerns about his right knee, which is by far the biggest reason. He put up big numbers, had proper size, and had a good arm, so there was really no reason why he would slide unless it was because of that knee. That is exactly what would happen, and despite that, the Eagles still saw a lot of potential in him as he signed a contract with over $300,000 in guaranteed money, and that's one of the largest contracts ever for an undrafted free agent. And more specifically, that was the biggest of the 2022 NFL Draft. So unfortunately, because of this knee issue, I do see a limited ceiling in Strong, but this guy's got a heck of a story, and I really hope he finds a way to be a journeyman backup, and I do believe one day he'll get a chance to start a game, as I don't think he'll be a franchise guy, but he will be able to complete that storybook ending. What do you guys think though? Why do you think Carson Strong ended up going undrafted? Do you think he has any future in the NFL? And what's another player or topic I could take a look at in my next video? 
be sure to let me know down below. Smash that like button if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you are new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.